throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. The concept of a being's life coming to an end, but being reborn into a new and better existence, is common throughout mythology and folklore. But arguably, none are more famous than the legendary phoenix. Often described as being the only one of its kind, the phoenix is a large bird, often depicted akin to a large eagle, beautiful in appearance, with vivid plumage and a song that lifts the heart of all who hear it. When it is time for the phoenix to die, variously claimed as anywhere from 500 to 1,000 years or more, the bird is engulfed in flames until it is not but ashes. But then a miracle occurs, and the phoenix is reborn from the ashes of its former self. It is a beautiful concept, and one that inspires hope. But where do the myths of the phoenix originally come from? The origins surrounding the myth of the phoenix are shrouded in mist. No one seems to know exactly where it came from. The earliest mention concerning a phoenix-like bird comes from Egyptian mythology, in the form of the Bennu a heron-like entity associated with the sun, creation, and rebirth. The Greek historian Herodotus, writing about Egyptian customs and traditions in the 5th century BCE, wrote that the people at Heliopolis described the phoenix to him, likening it to an eagle with red and gold plumage, reminiscent of the sun. As per Herodotus, they claimed it lived in Arabia over the course of 500 years before dying a fiery death and subsequently rejuvenating. The phoenix would then build a funerary egg with myrrh and the remains of its previous self and proceed to carry it from Arabia to the Temple of the Sun at Heliopolis. It is surmised that Herodotus's description of the phoenix was based on images of the Bennu. But from Herodotus, we get the name Phoenix, as well as the concept of a death by fire. The Roman poet Ovid, famed for his retellings of Greek mythology in his work Metamorphoses, relays the story of the Phoenix nearly identical to the one told by Herodotus, though he adds the details of the Phoenix's diet being composed of incense and sap, the tree that the phoenix dies and is reborn upon being a tall palm tree, and the addition of the phoenix's nest and pyre being formed of cinnamon, spiked nard, cassia bark, and yellow myrrh. The phoenix would go on to be featured in a number of medieval bestiaries. Medieval bestiaries were not naturalistic or scientific descriptions of animals, as one might expect from a modern encyclopedia, but rather they were theological collections of moral and symbolic stories about animals, plants, or stones, which served to show how all of the natural world was a part of biblical creation. In the Aberdeen Bestiary from 12th century England, the phoenix is said to be a fantastical bird from Arabia, purple in color, based off of its name, and granting the phoenix regal associations, as purple was an expensive color to replicate, and often reserved for royalty. In Guillaume Le Clerc de Normandie's work Bestiaire from the 13th century, the phoenix retained all previous traits spoken of by previous writers, but this time its homeland is stated as being India an even more remote place in the eyes of medieval Europeans. From these ancient sources, spanning many centuries, we can conclude that the ancient world saw the phoenix as regal and beautiful, filled with majesty and power, 
and being incomparably exotic. The phoenix is a truly marvelous bird, but no one seems to know exactly where its legend originates. The power of the myth rings true for people across many cultures. In ancient Rome, the image of the phoenix adorned many walls and currency, believing that the bird represented Rome itself, the eternal nature of the empire that continued to return with each new emperor. It was adopted as a symbol in early Christianity, as an analogy of Christ's death and his subsequent resurrection. It has appeared on family crests and shields throughout time, usually depicted as an eagle, surrounded but not hurt by flames. Phoenix, Arizona was named such because it was settled upon the ruins of a Native American site, and the first European inhabitants decided to name their city in concurrence with the idea that from the ruins of one city, another was created. In modern times, the phoenix has become among the most popular of mythical creatures appearing in a wide range of media, both physically and metaphorically. From William Shakespeare's The Tempest and Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 to the Chronicles of Narnia and Harry Potter. The phoenix's staying power is so strong, perhaps, because of all the mythical creatures from antiquity. The phoenix is the one that frequently expresses an enduring sense of hope and redemption. The story of the phoenix explains that we as humans are all of us capable of rising from our own ashes.